So people, in this video, we have taken up this huge challenge of uh, addressing tuberculosis in children. See, normal tuberculosis, you know, it is a disease. It is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria. <clears throat> Here you can see that under zeal Nielsen stain, that is acid fast stain, uh, you have this acid fast bacilli. So you call it as a AFB, acid fast bacilli. Okay, so even if you put um, uh, acid, it will not they will not lose the stain, right? Isn't that is the concept of this? So this is Zeal Nielsen stain. So you can see here, pink color, right? Curved beaded appearance, and they can also be in pairs. So this is the bacilli, beaded, acid fast, slender, slightly curved bacilli. This is causing what? It is causing tuberculosis. It is mycobacterium. Tuberculosis, the name itself of the bacteria is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So tuberculosis bacteria, it can affect uh, every part of your body, it can affect. So just see what and all it can affect. It can affect your skin, okay, it can affect your lymph nodes. It can affect your lungs mainly, pulmonary tuberculosis, miliary tuberculosis, which is a severe form of that. Even the brain, uh, the coverings of the brain, meninges, so those that can become tubercular meningitis, right? Then in the abdomen, you can have ileocecal tuberculosis affecting so many organs. You can have the genital pelvic tuberculosis also. And this is the uh, different locations of where they are telling you it can affect. There is another type of uh, tuberculosis, which is multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. So many types of tuberculosis, basically. So, um, what did I want to tell you here? Something I wanted to tell you. Yeah, so these two forms can be prevented by... Uh, vaccination, BCG vaccine, okay, that's what they say. And pulmonary TB up to 50%, it can protect, they are saying. So from where does this uh, tuberculosis uh, bacteria come? From where does it come? So the sources will be for you milk, right? That's why you drink pasteurized milk. And basically the air, right? It comes from other people. So are you focusing people from where is the uh, bacteria coming? From milk, which is uh, has supposed to be pasteurized. So this is not going to be any more a source for you because milk, I think now we are not getting. Mostly tuber tuberculosis is coming from one person to the other. Okay. Uh, that is why you should uh, wear masks, they say. Just like how corona you can prevent. Uh, similarly, you can prevent tuberculosis also by wearing a mask, face mask, right? So uh, the best way to prevent BCG vaccine, which is given at birth itself, right? And uh, if you have missed it, then uh, until the one year of life, they can give, they are saying, okay? And like this is the left arm um, in the insertion of the deltoid, they are giving this uh, vaccine. How much they are giving this vaccine? You can see it is in a colored bottle and that will be powder actually. It will, it will be freeze dried uh, vaccine. That is the lyophilized form it is. <coughs> Let me just go down here. So uh, this is the vaccine which they will, this powder they will mix with uh, saline. Remember, it is saline, not water. What is it? Saline, 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 saline. So they'll mix this with and they will uh, uh, prepare, they will, re, they will reconstitute the vaccine and you have to give the vaccine uh, here in the uh, left arm. So basically, how much will you give? 0.1 ml intradermally you will give. Intradermally means, what do you mean by intradermal? Between the layers of the which dermis? Epidermis or dermis? Dermis. Because I am thinking it is intradermal, right? Actually, it is um, below the epidermis. That's what they are saying. They didn't clearly say that it is... Uh, what happened here? <clears throat> they didn't clearly say that it is uh, dermis. They are saying it is uh, below the epidermis. That's what they are trying to say. Anyways, so you will raise a bleb and give that. So here they are showing you how they are raising a bleb and giving. Okay, this they are showing you the left arm, uh, forearm actually they are showing. No, you should actually give in the left arm. Okay, this is just for intradermal injection. We showed you this photo, but actually you should remember it is the left arm. Okay, at the insertion of the deltoid they are saying. And this is a live attenuated vaccine. So you should be very careful while giving this vaccine. The other, they should not have any other uh, conditions which are immunocompromised conditions like uh, HIV, etc. Okay, so remember this is live attenuated vaccine. So the full form of BCG is Bacillus calmit urine based on the scientists. And Bacillus because you know it is an acid fast bacilli. It's a bacilli basically. Okay, then we told you 0.1 ml uh, intradermal left arm you will give, right? 
then so it prevents uh, miliary tuberculosis and tubercular meningitis uh, mainly it prevents this and uh, pulmonary tuberculosis 50 percent coverage they are saying it will give okay and once the person is vaccinated within one or two months this person will be tuberculin positive that means they are vaccinated right then we told you that you have to reconstitute it with saline correct then uh, how is this vaccine prepared if somebody asks you it is not from micro mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria it is from mycobacterium bovis bacteria okay that's what they have written here vaccine is prepared from mycobacterium bovis by growing it on potato medium there's a lot of microbiology for you okay so did you understand that uh, we are we have covered basically most uh, high level about tuberculosis but what is it about children right that's what we want to know because this whole topic is about children See, uh, the thing is, uh, tuberculosis in India is a huge burden, right? And uh, most of us are carriers, that's what they say. And um, uh, the magnitude, you understood, is very huge, right? Did you understand that? That the magnitude of tuberculosis is very huge, okay? So, now let us uh, look at uh, how children get it. Children get it from adults. And, uh, yeah, they can get it from other children also, right? Why did they say only adults? They want to blame us. And because of HIV and all that, you know, tuberculosis cases are rising. Why is tuberculosis case rising? Because of, because of cases are rising because of HIV, right? So HIV, tuberculosis, hand in hand, friends, partners there. So when you test person for HIV and he's HIV positive, always check for tuberculosis. If person is always having tuberculosis, check for HIV, correct? Something like that. One more thing they are adding, you know, because of malnutrition, these, these cases will rise. Cases will rise because of HIV. Actually, malnutrition, you know, obviously, if you are malnourished, you can get a lot of diseases, right? So, malnourishment you add here. That's why in pediatrics, everything is the same thing, right? Eat well, eat well, eat well for children. So, here you add that also, okay? Eat well. So, this bacteria will enter, you know, and we will look at what happens when it enters. Uh, first time, right? That time it is primary tuberculosis. So, the first time this is uh, affecting the person, right? So, there will be something called as a GONS focus here. You can see here in the lungs, they have shown here that there is a GONS focus and there is a lymphatic component and here there are some hilar lymph nodes. So, this is a GONS complex, they call the three things together, okay? So, uh, a GONS focus lymphatic component that's why how it is going and affecting the lymph nodes we told you right so these are the lymph nodes which are affected this is the hilar lymph node in the lungs so this is the gons complex this is something that you see only in children okay because it is primary tuberculosis feature so you can see this it's not just in the lungs it can be anywhere even in the abdomen there could be a gons complex so it is in primary tuberculosis where the person has not been previously infected or immunized this is mostly seen in children gons complex I think it's becoming a little technical for you. So, anyways, just focus here. There is something called as a granuloma. Okay, here, this is very important. This In the middle, there is a, the organism will still be there, okay, in the middle. And uh, wait, we'll draw the organism here. So, the, the organism will still here be here, causative organism. Around it, you can see caseous necrosis. Remember this very important word, you should remember caseous necrosis. And around that, you have this giant cells called as the Langhan cells. Okay, they are macrophages. Langhan cells, giant cell. You will have Langhan. Please say this giant cell, Langhan cells. And then you have the lymphocytes and the fibroblasts. So, this is the granuloma of tuberculosis. You should know this. Okay. So, this is what is the pathology we are talking about, guys. Uh, now, this is very standard features of uh, tuberculosis, really, we are, except for the GONS complex that you saw now. Everything else is the standard thing that we are telling you. Okay. So, now this uh, child got uh, tuberculosis. What will happen? Either that uh, part of it which has caseous necrosis, etc., it can either uh, become fibrosed and calcified. Okay. And it can, that can be the, uh, 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 end of it or it can be the, it can just be there like that okay but the con causative organism is still in the middle remember and then there will be uh, either it can um, uh, affect the lungs or it could have gone to any alimentary canal etc where it will cause you other problems like tuberculous peritonitis can be there right um, then there can be uh, tabes mesenterica something to do with the abdomen uh, tuberculosis okay or it can disseminate to the other parts of the lung or it can go to the other lung also okay so that is progressive pulmonary tuberculosis especially you will see all this progressive progressive in people who have hiv uh, aids etc immunocompromised okay then um, uh, miliary tuberculosis it can become okay it will spread via the hematogenous route this is called as primary miliary tuberculosis okay 
it will affect all other organs liver spleen kidney bone bone marrow brain everything okay and then it may come back after years to haunt you that will be called as secondary tuberculosis okay so where do you see the gons complex in primary tuberculosis remember what shall we read next in this uh, topic it's a very vast topic now let's do one thing let us look at some main differences between childhood tuberculosis and adult tuberculosis okay uh, pay attention here see there is gons complex right primary focus which is there in childhood tuberculosis it will not be there in adult okay and this is in child it will be a primary infection okay from a uh, that is it it's a primary tuberculosis basically remember then uh, usually a child is not infected oh that is why they told you the child will get from adult it will not get from other children because child is not infective okay then in this some glandular elements are dominated says then look at this there will be hematogenous dissemination which is common so that miliary tuberculosis meningitis etc is very common so you will have children when they come with this neck rigidity and the kernic sign and all that you should uh, bradinsky sign sign etc you should always suspect if it is a tubercular meningitis what type of meningitis etc also you should check okay you should say, say, send the csf for what acid fast bacilli check okay uh, then there can be a tuberculosis ulcer in the child have you seen any child with tuberculosis we did have a child who had these nodules uh, what do you call them that matted nod, uh, lymph nodes will be there in the neck right that is a characteristic feature of um, tuberculosis correct we had a child who had that matted lymph nodes look at this uh, image here this is a tuberculous matted lymph node okay a pathology specimen i'm throwing so much information at you from here and there look at this there is something called as matting of this uh, lymph nodes right that is the pathognomic uh, feature of tuberculosis okay so if anybody has this mat matting of this lymph nodes it is there's some word i'm looking for actually tubercular lymphadenitis lymphadenitis then matting then cold abscess yes this is the word cold abscess right if there is deep to deep fascia there is a cold abscess it's not warm to touch and then etc etc what is it it is it could be tuberculosis i think then they then they are calling it as a collar studded abscess look at these these words cold abscess and then a collar studded abscess csa collar studded abscess and then you have a sinus formation through which it will drain the pus right this is the stages of tuberculous lymphadenitis so it is very difficult to get the symptoms right so symptoms it can be asymptomatic then happy right then mild fever or high grade fever anorexia weight loss right then like we told you neck mass mass and neck right neck mass see they didn't very clearly tell you but this could be an evening rise of temperature right fever greater than 2 uh, weeks so there could be a swelling in the neck then it can become a sinus like we told you how it will become a, a sinus formation right in the neck the from the lymph node so there could be an ulcer right then there could be some in advanced stages there can be that's cough with um, sputum expectoration right or there could be hemoptysis that is blood in sputum right is that the way you put it blood in sputum so just imagine if the nodes in the neck are becoming very uh, big then there can be problem in breathing there could be uh, wheezing cyanosis compression of the airway partial compression of the airway right that can be there it depends on the type of tuberculosis like you know that can affect so many places but if there is a hematogenous spread in like in miliary tuberculosis there can be high grade fever dyspnea cyanosis then there can be crepitations and ronchi also okay when you auscultate that wouldn't be symptom that would be more like signs that you find crepitations ronchi etc right there's a term you should know scrofula tuberculous cervical lymphadenitis cervical this is cervical right because of tubercular bacteria okay scrofula that's a term that is they are using for tuberculosis only so those words matted lymph nodes um uh, cold abscess um, then what was that csa what was csa yeah collar studded abscess then sinus formation scrofula these are the terms they are expecting you to tell when they are asking you about uh tuberculosis that gons complex these are the words they are looking for okay in your paper 
<coughs> then okay so all this is mostly sounds like very pulmonary now talk about meningitis what signs will be there neck rigidity fever um, altered sensorium so people where are we um, are you focusing we have moved on to meningitis okay so basically meningitis means what and all will be there you know there can be um, raised intracranial pressure due to which what will happen there can be seizures there can be um, what was i saying fever headache irritability drowsiness right there can be nuchal rigidity that is neck rigidity vomiting hypertonia etc there can um, please focus on this nuchal rigidity so when you flex the neck it is flexing the is raising its legs so that's the brudinsky sign okay so basically when you uh, flex the neck what is happening it is uh, the hips and knees are also flexed the patient's hip and knees to flex when the neck is flexed okay this is because of the neck stiffness okay because of the meningitis okay this is the brudinsky sign then you have one more thing called as the kernick sign guys uh, so when the thigh is flexed at the hip and knee at 90 degree angle subsequent extension of the knee is painful that's it it's just painful leading to resistance okay so all that about the uh, meningitis okay then what about abdomen if abdomen is affected what will happen abdomen what and all signs you will see abdominal pain colicky pain vomiting constipation okay it will be tense the abdomen feels tense it feels doughy the wall the abdomen feels doughy the abdominal wall is tense they are saying okay so in signs i would say uh, the tense and all is something for a doctor to say it's more like a sign and the lymph nodes will be enlarged okay in history you can ask if somebody else has these symptoms at home right if they have uh, if the mother has tuberculosis etc then how will you uh, symptoms then you add signs okay then coming to um, the diagnosis what investigation signs obviously signs diagnosis means signs also symptoms also then well let's come to the tests that you will do okay it's okay no people because in symptoms only i covered the signs also right mm -hmm. brudinsky signs kernick sign we have covered can you say brudinsky brudinsky yeah it is actually brudzinski okay and then say kernick 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 sign kernick sign meningitis meningitis neck rigidity neck rigidity yeah thank you so basically you can take samples right sputum sample in child it's very difficult to get a sputum sample right if it is pulmonary or suspecting so chest x ray you can do then you can do a, a csf if you want uh, acid fast stain right look for acid fast bacilli in the sputum also any sample right you will look for the bacteria right then you have cb nat right to find out that is amplification cartridge based cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test that is cb nat right n n a t nucleic acid amplification test okay so many tests are there then you have the culture you can culture the tuberculous bacteria you can grow it where can you grow it what was those medium they have taught you in um, in microbiology for tuberculosis lj media lovenstein jensen media okay that is what we know what else is there other media this is lg media the other bacteria uh, other media are also there dorset egg media etc look at this uh, if you want right so where are we now people so culture all that we told you then they are saying that uh, it is difficult to diagnose tuberculosis in children how if there is a neck node how will you detect will you do fnac for it but anyways um, ultrasound can show whether it's matted or not right the lymph nodes okay now look at this here tuberculin test are you able to see how they have raised a bleb here and they are given some uh, um what have they given here they are checking the delayed hypersensitivity reaction to its specific antigenic components so basically this is a skin test this is to diagnose latent infection or if it is positive it can also mean that it is the person is vaccinated that's all okay 
I think this much information is enough. More about tubercle and test you read. Do you know after vaccination, if people have reaction, then it can mean a positive reaction. So accelerated response after injection of a vaccine is observed in certain individuals who are suffering from tuberculosis. So if they have an induration more than more than an induration more than five to six millimeter five to six millimeter after three days of the BCG vaccine, then they could be. Um, they could have uh, tuberculosis. Okay. <clears throat> now the thing is, does this apply to children? Okay. So what and all you saw till now? So many things we saw. Man, to tuberculin test. We saw then a BCG test is there. That's not like a test. Mostly they're giving a vaccine and it is reacting. Okay. Radiology we told you, chest X-ray, right? For pulmonary tuberculosis. Then, so histopathology we already told you, right? You can take the sample of the tissue and check that histopathology, that granuloma you forgot or what? Here the organism there is there around it that is caseating necrosis, like cheese-like necrosis is there, and around it you have giant Langerhans cells. Then you have the lymphocytes and you have the fibroblasts. That diagram you'll have to draw if we are, they are asking you diagnosis. Okay, then. So basically, you will have to combine all these things, okay, radiology, lab, microbiology and all this uh, CBNAT which comes under what microbiology only I am guessing or does it come under biochemistry, nucleic acid. But you are trying to detect an organism, it should be mic uh, microbiology only, right. Then, uh, so using all this information, microbiology, radiology, clinical, all this information, you will come to a conclusion that there is uh, tuberculosis, right. So basically, what and all, uh, there is a, uh, a whole flow chart, okay, you will take a chest x-ray and a manto test, okay, and then you will see if the x-ray, x-ray is suggestive of tuberculosis. If x-ray is suggestive of tuberculosis, they are going to check the sputum, whether it is uh, uh, positive, uh, okay, uh, for acid fast bacilli, or you can take a gastric aspirate, right, because these children don't give sputum, right, they swallow the sputum, so you can take a gastric aspirate or an induced sputum, okay. So basically, you should understand that uh, you will check it for what? For the bacteria, right? And then what else you can uh, do? That's all, right? So based on what other uh, location it is in, you can try a biopsy or a uh, bronchoscopy or a bronchoalveolar lavage, etc. So now let's move on to treatment. Okay, people, are you okay? <coughs> the treatment. So you have a new case or a, uh, a previous case. That is what they say. <clears throat> there are only two categories. So you have here uh, uh, HRZE and then HRE. Okay, that's what if you are able to see here. It is HRZE and HRE. Okay. So if it's a new, so let us say all children mostly will be new only. Okay. So HRZE for two months and then HRE uh, HRE for uh, uh, four months. So total six months. So H is isoniazid. Just think H is uh, written like uh, turned I, isoniazid, rifampicin and Z is what? Pyrazinamide and E is what? Ethambutol, right? So it is written here, isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol, okay? So look at this uh, based on the uh, how to dose and all. Isoniazid, it is 10 to 15 milligram per kg per day, okay? This is uh, very difficult to remember, right? So just remember at least the uh, names of the drugs and their uh, main uh, main um, side effect. Okay, so mainly it is hepatotoxic, right? Hepatotoxic is there everywhere, and uh, where else hepatotoxic? Just remember, it is all these are toxic to the liver. And when you take rifampicin, what happens? It can make the urine uh, color uh, or uh, orange, right? So that also you can remember. Have they written that anywhere? This guy itself is wearing orange shirt. So anyways, remember this much we have covered in tuberculosis in children, we have covered this topic. Um, tuberculosis is a very vast topic. However, uh, we have covered it to the best that we can for uh, a pediatric uh, MBBS paper. Okay. So that's all for now, guys. Uh, just watch this video again as a revision. Okay. Bye-bye.